one of the guys that we got a lot of great feedback uh, on was uh, Mr. Fantasy Omatic, and uh, as I met this guy perusing the internet for some red zone statistics and found that this guy does a ton of work that I one day aspire to have the time to do. Uh, even if this guy didn't have the time, he still put it in uh, to get it done, and we got a lot of really, really good responses from having him on the first time, so Joe, I'm happy to welcome back to the show the one, the only, from FantasyOmatic.com. You can follow him on Twitter at FantasyOmatic, just like it sounds, F-A-N-T-A-S-Y-O-M-A-T-I-C. Welcome back to the show, man. What's going on tonight? Gentlemen, ple- pleasure to be here. I really appreciate you guys having me back on. I'm, I'm digging it. I'm excited. So like three weeks ago, you're West Coast, and I understand that this week you're, we're uh, having an all-East Coast episode here with uh, Josh Saviano from the one years preceding you. I guess you're yeah. out there for some uh, some big Packer games this weekend, right? Is yeah, that right? Yeah, I'm so excited about the season opener on uh, Thursday night that I'm already in Green Bay, <laughs> counting down, waiting for that season to start. So uh, looking forward to it, man. I'm super pumped for football season. I cannot believe week one's right around the corner. It, it feels like it was going to take forever to get here, and now it's here, and I, I can't believe it, but I actually have got everything done. Uh, I only have one draft left that we'll be doing next week with uh, Chapstick, who uh, is one of the guys that plays in the band, <clears throat> excuse me, that hosts the sh- that uh, intros the show every week. We also are going to have uh, Josh Saviano, a.k.a. Paul Pfeiffer, possibly rumored at one point to be Marilyn Manson uh, in the league as well. So that'll be my last league, and I said I was going to have fewer leagues than last year. I played in six last year. I believe I'm up to seven this year. Uh, Joe, what, what is, what's the count that you're up to this year, Joe? How many are you playing in? I think it's up to, uh, well, if we do this auction, that will make 18. Oh, geez. All right, so uh, so Fantasy Automatic, how many leagues are you throwing down in this year, man? Is it in between I, I'm me only, and Joe or? I, no, God, no. I'm only in six, and my big one, my you know, the the one that's closest to your heart, the friends and family, is uh, big draft uh, Sunday morning, and um, you know that one's for all the marbles and all the bragging rights. So uh, that's my last of six. Can't wait to get that one over with and get this season started. I will say this: I actually found a very cool feature on ESPN.com today because the NFL Mirror Leagues that we'll be talking about here in a little bit are 32 team league uh, divided into two 16 team leagues of. Uh, each team in the NFL only drafted from half the player pool, which was a nightmare to try to get 16 people to remember that they can only draft from one half the player pool. It was just an absolute uh, nightmare to pull the draft off. But it's finally done. But I was noticed a really cool thing on ESPN. You can award trophies, either weekly trophies, yearly trophies, everything that actually stay like in a little trophy case uh, that follows your team around, whether it's high score for the week or you know low score for the week, which is one that you obviously don't want to get tagged with a bunch of times. But I thought that was a really cool feature on ESPN where they have lots of little uh, trophies that you can add to. So we may be throwing this little uh, auction league together Monday night, and I might be sticking up a bunch of trophies that will be up for grabs during the season. I thought that was a cool feature. I'd never seen that before. I like. Hey, I'll take any kind of trophy I can get, even if <laughs> even if it's below the score. I, I, I'm. Uh, it's all about hubris for me. All right, so the episode tonight is titled 2011 Bold Predictions, and we're going to get some of those from you in just a few minutes. But the reason we want oh, to yeah. have you back on, something that definitely, definitely intrigued me that you were talking about, is this massive algorithm that you've built, this huge spreadsheet. I can only imagine what it looks like uh, on oh. your computer, but thank God for Microsoft Excel. It's a wonderful program, whoever invented it. <laughs> Uh, kudos to you. Maybe we'll try to get them on at some point so I can just tell them how much I love them because uh, I do love me some spreadsheets. But for those people that don't know, they hear the words algorithm and it sounds over their head. You definitely did the hard work so they can reap the benefits over at fantasyomatic.com. But why don't you just explain to people what this algorithm is, why you built it, and what you expect to, what kind of information you expect to get out of it once the season's up and running. Oh, you bet. And, uh, and again, I really appreciate the opportunity to talk to people about this. It's a, it's a pretty heady concept. I'm going to interpret it into plain English uh, because I think the output of it is, is going to be really important. Uh, and first, really what it is, it's, it's a solution to a problem in a way that we look at uh, fantasy players, their production, and more importantly, uh, predicted production that these fantasy players are going to have. And these problems, I'll identify what the problems are really quickly, and then I can talk about how the algorithm algorithm solves these. First problem is um, trying to get an idea of how valuable a player is. And generally one of the uh, ways that all of us do uh, do this is by looking at what kind of production has he had so far this season. What is his average fantasy points per game, uh, per game, per example? That's a really good sort of one that we can all understand. That idea, the idea of average fantasy points per game, is actually broken, believe it or not. It's an indicator to compare against other, uh, the other, uh, other, like, let's say, quarterbacks. I'll give you an example. 
Um, and also the defensive ranks against. This is something that I've always been intrigued with. I've been studying this for a few years, um, just that concept alone. Uh, the idea of saying, hey, this, you know, we hear this bantered around all the time. You know, uh, it's a very polarizing issue, uh, strength of schedule. But the reality of it is when it comes right down to it and you're doing your research for any given week, everybody buys into it. The, the idea here, this, is a, um, this algorithm produces data that serves as a metric to allow you to make those tough decisions every week, not whether or not you're going to start AP or, you know, whether or not, um, you know, your, your stud first-round pick is going to be in your roster this week. It's for those bubble picks, and these are the ones that we toil over for the entire week while you're sitting there at work trying to, you know, figure out which guy am I going to start. This is the information that's going to help you make the right decision every time. Uh, and the, and it, so it goes beyond strength of schedule. And one of those metrics you hear when you're listening to, you know, podcasts or radio shows, watching ESPN, whatever it is, these guys are always talking about, hey, listen, this guy's going up against such and such defense. They're ranked 28th in the league against uh, uh, fantasy running backs. You know, it's going to be a tough matchup, da 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 right? Well, those metrics are actually broken as well. So what this algorithm does is actually fixes both of them. And let me get to the plain English part here for you. So instead of just looking – at the defense that any given player, let's say a quarterback, uh, is facing each week, what we do is we look at all the other players in his same position that that defense that he's facing has already played that season. So, for, for example, I'll make this real simple. Let's say you've got um, two players. You're trying to decide which guy to start. One guy averages 20 fantasy points a game. Another guy averages 17 fantasy points a game. looks pretty simple, right? I mean, you'd think, hey, let's – go with the 20 uh, fantasy points a game guy. But if you actually look, break down who that player has faced so far this season, you know, what if this guy is a quarterback and he's gone up against Houston, you know, type, uh, you know, Houston 2010 type defense uh, all season long, that 20 points is not very impressive anymore. And what if that 17 point guy has gone up against, you know, uh, the toughest defenses, you know, your Pittsburghs of 2009s, Every season. Well, what we do is we flatten that out. This algorithm goes in, does all the math for you, figures out actually which of those two players is the right, uh, is the, the stronger producer out of those, and then also then looks at his matchup for the week. And that's where I, you know, was saying earlier about, yeah, this defense is rated, you know, 30th against the run, and this defense is rated 17th against the run. Well, you might think, yeah, I'm going to start my guy against the, you know, the lower rank or the higher rank, you know, however you're looking at it. Uh, the easier matchup of the two. Well, we break this down in the algorithm and say, in some cases, believe it or not, a defensive rank that's like 10 points lower than another one uh, might actually be the better one of the two. So if, even if none of that made sense, here's the good news. Uh, we've done all the work for you on the website. If you want a really detailed breakdown of uh, all the information that I've just given you there, uh, we've got a whole page you know, over at fantasyomatic.com. You just click across the the top of the page or something called the algorithm break it all down for you and for anybody out there that might be kind of a data nerd um and i won't you know i won't go on this tangent with you uh the way that we do this is through a really sort of complicated mathematical concept called regression analysis and uh this is a, a mathematical term that's used in a lot of study and uh it, it basically just compare one a uh, couple different variables against each other for the purposes of predicting a third variable. And in this case, we take players versus defense, and the third variable is their, their performance down the road. So what we're doing on the site, and I'm excited to announce this here, uh, just with you guys exclusively, is every week we're going to have a breakdown of the top 100 uh, players, top 100 players for the week. It's going to be really easy for you when you're making those bubble decisions. You just find the guy that's higher ranked with some uh, general idea of his predicted points, and you can compare them against other positions, the whole nine yards. But then the part that I really get excited about is looking at forecasting of player values. So when you get into those, I just got offered a trade situations where, you know, I want to know, is this guy on fire or is he just going to fall off for the rest of the season? We're going to have all the data to give you predictive measures to tell you what's coming up. So tons of stuff, and it's all free, too. I mean, I'm just I'm so excited about this. I just want to share it with everybody. So, um well, yeah, one thing I want to say about it real quick is, yeah, yeah one thing please. I want to say about it is, is not that people can't do what you're doing. What you're doing takes a lot of time. You know, a lot of people sit there and try to go back and, you know, click this window. Well, then the phone rings. Well, then this happens. And, <laughs> you know, you can you can do this research yourself, absolutely. Nobody's going to stop no you from doing it. But, but why do it yourself when, like you said, you guys have done 
all the hard work. You know, one thing I did for the first time ever last year was I decided to try to do my own strength to schedule rankings because I, I get really mad when people say something like, like you're talking about. Uh, somebody will say, well, you know, they're playing San Diego. They're the number one ranked pass defense. Well, that may be true on paper, but what are they judging that by? Most of the time they're only going by yards. Uh, or they're only going by scoring, which is just one part of the picture. You know, I'm assuming that your system's taking into account, like you said, each individual player. So you're factoring in, you know, sacks. You're factoring in interceptions. You're factoring in the offensive line play, the defensive line play. You're factoring in injuries. You're factoring in a lot of different uh, variables. Actually, you know, believe even it or not, weather is even in there, if you can believe it. Uh, that's how deep this thing is going. So, uh, and that's yeah, what no, I'm saying. It's yeah, going to help yeah. people out. And, like, even last year, like, I remember going back and looking, and I said at the beginning of the season that I really was kind of – low on Tom Brady because uh, Tom Brady was playing the hardest schedule uh, on paper to start the season last year against the pass. Well, when I went back and graded it at the end of the season, Tom Brady actually played in my, according to the analysis that I did, which is obviously not, you know, maybe at 25% of what you do, but I came out with it. Brady played the second hardest schedule last year. The thing is, Brady's just a phenomenal player. So it didn't matter that he played the second hardest schedule. He's still a great player. Meanwhile, you take somebody like Kansas City, who I'm pretty much down on everybody on the Chiefs this year because they played such a tremendously easy schedule last year no doubt. that I felt like a lot of their players benefited, and I think it's going to be really hard going for them this year. Now, I could be wrong, but I think that what you guys are doing, like you're saying, we're looking at who did they play, and maybe this guy that's only scoring 17 points a week has played three really good teams, while the guy that's only scoring 20 – or that's scoring 20, looks like the better player, but he's played really cake, cream puff schedules. This guy that's only scoring 17, he's projected over the next few weeks this, this guy that's going to blow up. Maybe the guy that's scoring 20 points, you know, he's got a rough uh, part of his schedule coming up. You look to unload him. Bingo. You nailed it. As a matter of fact, you just did a way better job of explaining it <laughs> than I did. But that, And that's exactly it. And, and really, what do we care what a player has done so far this season, right? We're selfish uh, fantasy uh, players. We we want to know what this guy's going to do for the rest of the season. So it's that other perspective for you. And that Tom Brady example and the Kansas City were two perfect examples of this. I'm hands-off on Kansas City for the same reason. I, the same reason that I took uh, Jamal Charles in the first round last year uh, because of his schedule. I mean, it was a ballsy pick back then, but uh, sure panned out uh, for a couple of my squads. It, it's it. And I don't want to leverage all over strength to schedule. I know people have a hard time with it. Um, but this takes into it player performance, like in that Tom Brady example you just gave. I mean, it's really a very important metric, and it's all flattened out. And for whatever it's worth, I, I personally come from a, a 20 years of uh, software engineering background and a really heavy background in mathematics. Uh, if anybody wants to look up or go wiki regression analysis, I think you'll really get charged up over that concept. You know, read it as far as you can. But um, it, this is re- like tons and tons and tons of work. Almost an embarrassing level of work has gone into this to make it so that it's just automated. We feed data in. It spits data out. That is what the fantasy omatic is, and it's all free for you guys on the site. So the one key thing, though, that I want to tell you, Jared, without going on too long about this, is that this system needs to have uh, data to work with, current season data. So um, it's going to be week three that you're going to see that this data, that uh, the new algorithm is going to be in place. And, and 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 everybody's probably comfortable with that because week one you already know who you're starting. I mean, you drafted these guys, right? There shouldn't be too many decisions. Uh, week two, you're still sort of you know feeling that out. But once we get into week three, you've got only one more week till these bi week replacement decisions you have to make. You start trolling waivers. Maybe you're thinking about trades. That's when the Omatic's going to be there for you with the new algorithm. And what I would tell everybody is uh, give us a follow on Twitter at Fantasy Omatic, like you mentioned before. We'll give you all the updates on when this stuff is live, and when it comes to game days, we'll answer all your questions using the algorithm like we already do. Um, and, you know, you'll be the first to know. We're going to release uh, the information on Twitter before we do anything uh, anywhere else. So, uh, you know, definitely, definitely check it out. I'm excited about it.